If you've watched me for a while, you know that I don't put a lot of stock into signs and synchronicities. It's very easy for the ego to find things around and fall down the rabbit hole of believing and justifying why things should be the way that the brain believes they should be, or that some higher power is sending messages that show someone is thinking about you or that you should reach out to someone. On the flip side, there are times when we get so tired of seeing consistent signs and synchronicities that we get angry when they appear, or we feel frustrated or confused or helpless and out of control. When you think about something consistently, like a twin flame, for example, you're putting so much energy into that thought that you will notice things that pop up. And even though to you, they may seem magical, they're just in fact the brain becoming obsessive. My twin likes to text me almost every day at 1111 and say, 1111 twin, so you don't forget. And it's become a running joke between us that the person who notices the time as repetitive numbers should reach out to the other and remind them that they're on a twin flame journey. Signs and synchronicities can be interpreted in infinite ways because the ego can interpret in infinite ways. However, there are three signs and synchronicities that I do put more weight on than the rest. And in this video, I'm going to explain what they are. Make sure to assess what's going on in your life when or if you see these repeating signs. And most importantly, don't go looking for them or they don't count. Number one, alarms going off. Without even being considered a sign, alarms are meant to get your attention and say, hey, be aware. The smoke detector is going off because you've burnt your food. Your phone's buzzing because it's time to get up for work. You need to punch in the code to turn your front door alarm off after entering the house. But there are also times in which you're on the receiving end of an alarm. The air raid sirens blaring are because a tornado is coming. Your car is blaring out front because someone is trying to steal your CD player. Do you guys remember those times when people would try to steal your CD players? <laughs> you need to pull over because an ambulance is behind you. When we're on the receiving end of an alarm, these are the moments that we need to pay attention to as signs and synchronicities. Burning your toast because you didn't clean out the toaster is not a sign that your soulmate is thinking about you when the alarm goes off, but rather a reminder to remove the crumbs. However, if you're going about your day and are perpetually greeted by the raging sounds of alarms shrilling, this is in fact something to be aware of. So let's walk through a normal day and explore the many ways that could that you could experience alarms going off that would be both signs and not signs. So chirp, chirp, your alarm wakes you up to go to work. You're annoyed because you didn't get to sleep until 2 a.m. and now you have to sit through meetings all day on little sleep. This isn't a sign, but rather just an everyday annoyance. On your drive to work, a fire truck, ambulance, and two cop cars have you and everyone else moving over to let them through. That's four more alarms that are now just making your morning more annoying. You get to work and the power had gone off in the building the night before. The coffee maker and microwave are beeping for someone to set the time on them. You sit in a meeting with a new client and their phone alarm goes off to remind them that they have another meeting coming up. On your way home, you step or you stop into the grocery store to pick up food for dinner. And as you walk in, the theft alarm goes off as someone walks out past you. You go home, start cooking dinner, and get a phone call. Your mind is somewhere else and all of a sudden, the smoke detector goes off in the kitchen. After you finally eat, you sit down to watch a TV show and alarms are blaring in the show because of the plot line. You're about to go to bed when all of a sudden your doorbell rings and scares the shit out of you. You open the door to see a food menu left on your doorstep. You set your alarm for the next morning and finally end your day. Okay, so now this would be a super loud day to anyone, but if you think about it, you've encountered 12 plus alarms throughout the day. And if you don't think that's the higher self trying to get your attention about something, then I, I don't know what other kinds of signs you need. <laughs> Try to recall what your mind state was like when the alarms were going off. 
Were you thinking about the same thing before every alarm went off? Were you envisioning a different life for yourself when the alarms went off? Were you thinking about a person when the alarms went off? That is what you need to pay attention to and figure out what the higher self is trying to get your attention about. Number two, the same wild animal follows you around. Animals have been used as totems and symbols for as long as humans have been around. Native Americans still utilize animal totems on their medicine wheel, during ceremonies, and to represent certain elements of the world and also personality traits. If you live in an area where you see wild animals on the regular, this will be a more difficult sign for you to follow. However, there are times when the same type of wild animal literally follows you around for a while, and it is up to you to research what that animal represents and see what resonates. Realize that some animals are not positive symbols. When I was dating my false flame, I woke up one morning to over 40 dead moths laying in the entranceway of my apartment. I lived on the fifth floor and never opened windows because I was in downtown Los Angeles, which was full of smog. It was within three weeks after those dead moths appeared that I found out all types of shit about the false flame and ultimately ended the relationship. Now, when dead moths appear near my living quarters, I am hyper aware of what is going on around me and in my life. To me, dead moths mean something similar to the moon card in tarot. <laughs> something is under the surface and hasn't been revealed yet. We make symbolism what we want it to be, and this is actually an entire psychology study called relational theory. To give another story, I was with a soulmate plus karmic who had severe addiction issues. Everywhere we would go, and I mean literally everywhere, from the West Coast to the East Coast and everything in between, we would be swarmed by thousands of ladybugs. And I mean fucking thousands. He viewed it as good luck and positivity for our, for our relationship. But I could never figure out why it was happening, but it just made me very uneasy. Finally, I correlated ladybugs with their darker symbolism of protection, which I desperately needed to be reminded of in that relationship. So let's talk about some other animals I personally pay attention to and what they symbolize to me. Please let me know in the comments what animals have meaning to you. So morning doves tend to show up, roost on my balcony, and follow me down the street when I am attempting to find mental peace or the higher self is letting me know that my egoic pain is being seen and validated. To me, they're also representative of my twin. A murder of crows will show up when I'm going through some sort of transformation or when I need to self-reflect. During our last separation, both my twin and I had murders of crows every day outside of our houses, 3,000 miles apart, waking us up every morning by calling. They would then sit in front of our houses all day. Hummingbirds fly up to my face when I need to submit and let go of control over something. It'll happen every day for a week straight or multiple times in a day. So remember, animal symbolism means different things to everyone, just as all signs and symbols mean different things to everyone. If you're followed around by a wild animal and they're acting strangely comfortable around you, do your research and see what resonates. If nothing resonates, give it some time and see if anything comes to you. But don't obsess over it. Remember that it's still your brain trying to make meaning out of something that's just, in the end, really cool. <laughs> number three, a specific number being very obvious. I'm going to tell you a personal story for this one. So the last separation that my twin and I had, I moved back home to the West Coast. My twin was living on the East Coast and got a new apartment in the middle of nowhere. From his bedroom window, he looked directly onto house number 11 and the sign 11. The street he was on was 111 West, the direction in which I was. To get out of the town, he had to take Route 1, so 111 led to Route 1, or 1111. No matter where he went, he was surrounded by 1s and 11s, all telling him to go west. Now, I thought this was hilarious, but he thought it was the most irritating thing in the world when he told me about it, and how literally everywhere he went, he felt like the universe was telling him which direction he should be going in. 
Numbers can be the most annoying symbols because you can find repeating numbers anywhere. After all, you really have a one in 10 chance of finding what you're looking for between the numbers zero and nine. And if that doesn't work, you can always add, subtract, divide, or multiply to get yourself closer to the number you don't want to see, but secretly want to see. Numbers lead to obsession and rumination because you can play with them and kind of shift them in any direction that you want them to go in to fit your obsessive thoughts. I'm not talking about doing mathematical equations that are of 3D significance. I mean, you can visually take numbers and turn them into symbols. So for example, you really want to see the number 14 because your ego has created a meaning to that number. You're walking and looking at your phone. You see that it's 3.14 PM. You stop, look up, and you're standing in front of house six. But next door is house eight. So, oh wow, you're seeing a sign because six plus eight equals 14. This is simply the ego taking numbers, being obsessive, and doing what it can to justify its obsession. Yes, we've all had those times in which we look at the clock at the exact same time every day, or we see repeating numbers whenever we look at the clock. I hate to break it to you, but we have an internal clock that is aware of what time it is, even though we may not consciously be. So when numbers are extremely obvious and should be paid attention to is when you see the same one over and over and over again, like you're being punked by the universe. Do you guys remember that show, Punked? <laughs> kind of showing my age. So, okay, for example, you interviewed for a new job and you don't know how you feel about it. The job interview was on the fourth floor of the building, suite 404. When you get into the car, you look at the clock and it's 4.44 p.m. You glance up and there's a billboard that proclaims four is the magic number. Your phone beeps and your friend has texted you, there's going to be four of us for dinner. Okay, so within the span of the last five minutes, you have been bombarded by the number four. If we're not obsessing over a love interest and the symbolism that numbers may show us, we may not even recognize that we've seen the number four so many times. But this is the perfect moment to look at numbers as symbols. Because when the ego isn't attached, the higher self can accurately come through. Four is the number of security, balance, and consistency. You may not egoically know whether you want this job or not, but the higher self sure is telling you that it's the right move for you. With regards to signs, symbols, and synchronicities in general, make sure that you can't rationalize it away. If you can say, yes, it's the middle of summer and there are butterflies literally everywhere, then it probably isn't a sign. If you can say, everyone's phones have been going off all day because we're all addicted to technology and it's not technically alarms, then right, it's probably not a sign. And if you can say, I've been looking at the clock every day at 2.22, but that's the only time I see repeating numbers, so it's just my internal clock, then yes, <laughs> you're understanding it's not a sign. When you're honest with how much the ego controls in your perception, it'll be much more fulfilling when you can't rationalize signs away. Until next week, all of my best and highest vibrations to you.